Hi, uh, my name is Daniel Rubio. I work for the Simeon Foundation, and I'm here to uh, introduce you to the uh, system model. Um, as you know, the Simeon platform was made up of uh, Simeon Limited um, and C60 assets primarily, although there have been some other contributions. As a result of that, it, it is a very um, a complex uh, software platform, and we needed to introduce some kind of uh, organization from two aspects, from the build point of view, so we need to have a structured way to build the platform, as well as uh, being able to represent it so that it's understandable and uh, manageable from an architectural perspective. So uh, that is what the system model is, it's a representation of all the assets that we have, obviously in a structured way. So we have layers, within layers we have packages, those packages have collections and the collections have components. And uh, the classification into layers, uh, packages, determines a hierarchy which uh, is, uh, helps in determining the dependencies and it helps with the managing, uh, managing the platform from that perspective. Um, from the build point of view, um, it allows you to determine what needs to be built. So each package is uh, buildable independently, but you need to determine the order in which those packages are built, and that's what the uh, system model with the system definition allows you to do. Uh, you can add a lot of information into this uh, you know, uh, model, into this graphical representation, and one of the ones that we use it primarily for as well is the technology domains. So we have associated uh, technology uh, packages with technology domains, there are about 13 uh, technology domains, which give you a vertical um, view of uh, a particular um, technology uh, and determines you know, which are the packages that make up that technology domain. So it is very useful to, uh, to, you know, for architects, for um, also developers, and, and you know, the two different views that we have for the model, which are basically a package level view, um, primarily used by system architects, and then we also have the collection view which is uh, used by system developers and so on. So um, let me show you how it works in practice. Okay, so I've just gone to the uh, Symbian developer website and here I'm just going to type uh, in the search box system model. And it should be the uh, first uh, hit. So all the information about the system model is contained here. I'm not going to go through every single detail, but uh, you know, I uh, encourage you to uh, read through it. What I do want to show you is this diagram here, which is a basic description of the structure of the system model. We have a description of the platform in terms of layers, and you can see that in this case we have three layers, and we also have a description of a package. So this is a package, it has two collection, collection one has three components, and collection two has two components. There are uh, possible dependencies between package one and two, but um, package three should not have any dependencies on the packages on the layer above. That's part of the description you can find in the document, and uh, which I think you'll find very useful. So if, you, if we go back and start browsing the code, what we'll see is, I'm just gonna choose one package at random, probably go with the kernel. I'm just gonna go into the MCL section. So here we are, kernel hardware services, so I can see that the structure in Mercurial is MCL, which means that it's the master code line. SF is obviously Simian Foundation. And now I have a representation of the uh, layers. So we have the first layer, which is the OS layer, and then we have the package. If I go into the package itself and look at the files, I can see that in the root directory of the package itself, there is a file called packagedefinition.xml. If I open it up, I can see that it contains a description of the contents of the package in XML format. When we come to putting all the assets together, each package has one of those. And when we want to build or um, create a graphical representation of the platform, what we do is we combine all of those package uh, underscore definition.xml into what we call the system definition.xml. It's a bigger file, and from that file, we it's what's used by the um, build tools to as an input to build a platform and we can also turn that XML into an SVG which gives us a graphical representation of the platform. Now I'm going to look at the definition of files. Again I use the search uh, box in the uh, Simian developer website and here I can see what is the uh, how this uh, file is constructed. For example if I go into a, a layer I'll see the details of how that layer is created and you can see the syntax and uh, how all the attributes uh, are made up. 
Okay, so enough of all that uh, XML gibberish. Now let me show you what it looks like in reality, which is a much better view of the platform, which is this here. Okay, so obviously things get a, bit, a little bit more complicated you know, when the wheel touches the, uh, the road. But let's see what we have here. This is uh, one layer, this is another layer, and this is another layer. And uh, this is what we call the OS layer, this is what we call the middleware layer, and this is at the top, is what we call the upper layer. So obviously, in terms of uh, dependencies, this is the, the strongest one, it's at the bottom, okay, that's what we're trying to show. The middleware, it's somewhere in between, and obviously the app layer doesn't have many, you know, no one has dependencies on the app layer, it's right at the top. But let me concentrate on to uh, this section here, and what we have here is a package. So this is a cellular and basement services package, which is resident in the OS layer. And what I can see here is that there are several collections within that package, some of them containing quite a significant number of components. And uh, some of the components that you'll see there is obviously uh, the telephony server, the adaptation. So it is quite an important package. And it's right at the bottom. It is in the OS layer. Uh, what we can also see is that it has a particular color, which means that it's the personal communications tech domain. And that's part of the information that we want to convey in this uh, view. So I'm going to talk about some of the other information that the system model can uh, represent. And that is the technology domain and also any other metadata associated with the uh, components of the packages. Um, if I choose one technology domain, for example, device connectivity, I can see that it has representation in the application layer, the printing package. It also has a presentation in the middleware through DLNA services. Bluetooth services, USB services, remote storage, and I also have representation in the OS layer. So very quickly, I can see that you know that technology domain it has representation across the uh, system model. Some of the other information that we can convey here is related to the type of components, such as whether it's a plugin, or whether it's optional, or whether it's documentation, or whether it's just an interface. So. And that's what you can see here. For example, a plugin has that particular shape, and we can represent that in the model. Configuration is that sort of like a you know octagonal shape, and we can see that in several places in the model. So it is very uh, powerful. It's not limited. You can customize it, and it's up to the device creators or um, anyone that wants to um, maintain a platform that you add components to. It's very useful from that point of view. Um, we generate the system model uh, for each PDK, which is integral for, as I said, for building, but also for understanding what are the contents of that uh, release. And uh, if you want more information, uh, all of this is in the uh, developer website, and follow the uh, release notes of each PDK to find out where the system model is. Thank you.